Well, the NBA draft is tomorrow, just over about 24 and a half hours or so, 24 hours, 45 minutes. The Spurs will be on the clock. I think we know what's going to happen there, but there's a lot more to be decided, including the Kings with three different picks, one in the first round, two in the second. Let's get some of the latest of what's going on with the draft and the draft board. Uh, Nathan Grubo, content manager of No Ceilings NBA Draft Board, joining us here. Love the name. Yeah, me too. No Ceilings, man. Yeah. Nathan, it's Jason and Jay. Awesome. How are you? I'm doing well, guys. Thank you so much for having me on the show. I appreciate it. Well, we appreciate you checking in. I mean, uh, nothing, nothing's different on your board. It's Victor for sure, number one. I mean, I don't think there's any surprises. Is he clear-cut, number one, to you? Oh, about as clear-cut as it can get, and it, it is not hyperbole to say that he is truly a, a generational talent who's about to come into the NBA, making a lot of noise, obviously bringing a lot of buzz with him and some headlines, and a lot of the interviews that are coming out, everybody's doing with him. He's a very charismatic young individual for for a big man which you, you you don't see a lot of personality from from some of the top big men that we've seen go number one in the nba draft but he seems like someone who's gonna really bring a lot of a little more flair than i think everyone was expecting as a number one pick seems to be have a great personality be a great kid overall nathan convince me why scoot henderson is not the number two pick for the charlotte hornets because for everything my money he is I, I'm not sure I can convince you that he shouldn't be the, the number two <laughs> overall pick, to be honest, because he's been number two overall on my big board this entire cycle. And it's it's not just everything we can talk about in relation to his game being one of the most complete two-way guards that we have, arguably the most complete two-way guard that we have in the 2023 NBA draft, how he carries himself as a professional, as an individual, someone who wants to grow off the court, as much as he does on it, every single move he's made, everything he does, everything he has done to get to this point has been of the mindset of, I want to be a better basketball player for sure, but I also want to be a better person. And I've spoken with, and I've done interviews with multiple people who have been very close to him this season, specifically Pooh Jetter and coach Jason Hart. You can find those on No Ceilings NBA on our YouTube channel. But when I spoke to them, they had nothing but great things to say about Scoot and all of that positive intel has carried with him throughout this entire draft process. Anyone you talk to has spent even five minutes with him. Can't stop talking about how good of a person he is and how hard of a worker he is. So reportedly just underneath six foot four as a point guard, about six, three and a half, six foot nine wingspan, as explosive as they come, truly guard, great decision maker on the offensive side of the ball. Jump shots going to improve as he as he continues to spend some time in the league. I mean, what what more do you want from right. the point guard mm-hmm. position? And more importantly, someone who can be a leader for your franchise. That's the type of person that I would want to draft at number two if I were the Charlotte Hornets. As we're talking with Nathan Grubel, got to ask you about the other potential candidate that seems like is going number two is Brandon Miller. Yeah. Again, it's not a knock on him. I think he's a terrific player, but I hope they're not doing this because I hope they're not taking Scoot because of ball like they already have ball i hope it's not a positional thought here but if they do go brandon miller what would they be getting in in the young man from alabama you said it perfectly none of what i said should be a knock on brandon miller because he is also number three on my board right so it's not like i'm sitting here saying that he could be number two but he's also like number five or number six on my board brandon miller is deserving to be in the conversation six foot nine wing prospect one of those bigger wings who can handle the ball make decisions off of a live dribble has certainly improved his playmaking he did improve one of his bigger knocks on him which was his at rim finishing as the year went on at alabama scored around 20 points per game shot very well from three-point range on high volume over seven three-point attempts per game still got to the line just underneath five times so he is as skilled of a scorer as they come on the wing from a complimentary standpoint, the thing that would hold him back from being number two for me is I just don't know if he has that next tier of upside, right? That true legitimate star. I'm going to be the best player, the second best player on a championship level team. Like I believe in, in Scoot and obviously in Victor, but in terms of getting a very solid option, on the wing, plus size, with the length, with the ability to defend multiple positions, help on the weak side on the back line, you know, certainly be a help defender rover along the baseline. The, the, that package, that two-way package at that size is what every single NBA team wants. And so that's why you're seeing them come up in the conversation for number two. It's not just looking for a cleaner fit with LaMelo. Do I, I, do, I do think LaMelo and Scoot could play with one another and succeed. Great players tend to figure out 
how to play with great players, but just the skill set that Brandon Miller would would be able to bring to that franchise at number two or number three, I think is just too valuable for teams to pass up in that range. Here with Nathan Grubel of No Ceilings and NBA Draft Board. Someone that kind of uh, has mesmerized me a little bit, and I know Jason will love this, is Amari Bailey from UCLA. He seems like he's moving up the board a little bit. I don't know if he's going to shake out of that second round, but why, what's your take on Bailey and why you think he's not going to be a first-round guy? I think more so it was just Bailey's lack of premier production in the first half of the season, or you could even make the argument the first two-thirds of UCLA season, right? He wasn't the, the number one guy for that team. He certainly played much more of a complimentary role next to an experienced point guard like Tiger Campbell next to someone who is reportedly tearing up workouts and actually projected to go inside the top 25 now in Jaime Hawkins. I can confirm that intel. He has been absolutely destroying anyone he goes up against in workouts. I would expect his name to go inside the top 25. So he was more of the third option for that team offensively when he was on the floor. But as the season went on, he improved his play mightily. You know, late February, early March, and then you saw what he was able to do in the NCAA tournament. And obviously, at the NBA Draft Combine, there's more to his game than what he was initially able to show at UCLA, right? Six foot five guard, big guard, able to operate in the pick and roll, make all the types of passes you would want out of that play type. Certainly has some scoring touch at the basket, is improving his outside shot, is getting better as a catch and shoot three point guy. So there's a lot to like about his game. And then you factor in how he was able to help that defense maintain itself as one of the best units on that side of the ball in the entire country. There's a lot to like about his game. And it's, it's more so the selling point of he was able to find himself and start getting his footing underneath him. He's still a very young player, was a freshman in college. So you look at what he could be two to three years from now, there is a chance he could be a starting point guard in the NBA, which is why when you get in that late first, early second round territory, I'm not sure how many names you legitimately want to take ahead of him. If I was any of those teams in that range and I have a spot to be filled and I'm in need of a third guard in my rotation, I'm absolutely looking at Mari Bailey's way. Hmm. Nathan, how about the Sacramento Kings? They had the breakthrough year last year. They will now pick 24th, assuming they keep that. They got a couple of second rounders at 38 and 54. But if we look at that first round pick at 24, um, who makes the most sense to you? If you're if you're the Kings, you're Monty McNair, you're that front office, what are, what are some of the names that you would definitely have on your radar there at 24? So I think everyone's expecting them to take Chris Murray. I, I think <laughs> let's, let's just get, the, get that one right out of the way. Just, it makes a lot of sense because of Keegan being there, but also just their need at that 3-4 position, right? That combo forward, another one of these bigger wings who is an efficient spot-up guy. He's able to easily finish plays. He's not the most stout defender on that side of the ball, but he'll give you enough because of his size, his strength, also adds a dimension to his rebounding. So Chris Murray would make sense as someone who's experienced who can come in and, and possibly play a role within the Kings' top nine, top ten rotation right out of the gate. Another name that I would consider, if I were any team in the mid to late first round, I'm looking for a player who can come in and make an impact to help us maintain our course of play and, and ultimately get into the playoffs or fight for a playoff spot is Ben Shepard out of Belmont. He's been one of the fastest risers uh, it, through this entire draft process, tore it up at the NBA draft combine went off to like 20, 28, 29 points, something like that in his second NBA combine game. That production is legit. He had a great senior year at Belmont, six foot six guard, legitimate combo. He can handle the ball and pick and roll. He's bursty. When he gets an open lane of the basket, he can certainly finish there. And then he's one of the, the most lights out shooters that we have in this entire draft, not just a spot up guy. You can get him going off movement. He can create shots off the dribble. He is a guard who he, again, he was a senior in college, but that doesn't mean that these guys don't stop getting better. Once they get to the NBA, I would expect him because he has a little more juice than people anticipated on the ball. I would expect him to keep improving, maybe even grow into like a secondary creator type role. He may be able to even play point guard with some second units. That's the guy who I would expect to continue rising in the draft process. And if he's there, for the Kings at 24, I'd give him a long look as well as obviously Chris Murray. Nathan, 60 seconds or less as we're running out of time here. You At last I looked, I believe you guys had Julian Strother out of uh, Gonzaga going to the Sacramento Kings. Your inkling, who do the Kings take at number 24 if they stayed there? Ultimately, I, I would still place my bet 
on Chris Murray, but mm. Julian Strother, another great option out of Gonzaga as well as someone who would be able to space the floor for everyone else. You're getting that big wing size at six foot eight. Someone like him or Shepard or Murray would all be great options. But yeah, my money, I would I would pick Chris Murray at twenty four. Mm. It's going to be exciting. We look forward to it tomorrow. Nathan, keep up the great work. Thank you for joining us today, and we'd love to do it again sometime soon. Absolutely. Keep me in mind, guys. Appreciate it. Take care. Thank, All right, you. thank you. Really good content. Check out the site, too. No ceilings, NBA.com. It's going to uh, happen, isn't it? What's that? Chris Murray's coming to Sacramento. I don't know. I'm a little worried about what Somebody's is going to grab him. Warriors, before, uh, Lakers, uh, Portland. Heat. Yeah. What about Portland at 23. I, I, no? I well, I've seen him there, but I feel like Portland might be. He's one of the older players in the draft. I don't know why I think they're going to take just young guys and swing, but mm. I, I don't know. It, they, I think he's going to make teams better. So he's a guy that the Kings have to, if they want him, might have to move up to get him. We'll see. All right, we've got to come back. We're going to talk more about uh, the Kings draft of the past, how they've done. Well, you know that, but there's some some guys they've hit on. We'll discuss that and more as we continue here on Sacktown Sports.